Hey guys, Grumper here. Welcome back to another Nancy Drew adventure. You're happy to be brand new to the channel. I'm playing through all these Nancy Drew games from the very first one to the most current one. So if you happen to like Nancy Drew, the Hardy Boys, mystery puzzles, whatever the case may be, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Come join the fun. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year, 2023 if possible. So greatly appreciate it. Free to you. It means the world to me. I'm going to shut up and we're just going to jump into the game, so... All right, so we talked to her. Let's look around. Is this Jake and his wife? Yes. From what I've read, Camille loved to sing and dance, even in death, apparently. Jake reportedly told people that after she died, he would sometimes see strange glowing lights outside the windows at night, bobbing gracefully alongside the train as if dancing with it. He said he found the sight very comforting. I suspect normal people would have found it terrifying. Alright, nothing more for us to look at in here, it doesn't look like. Right, let's go all the way to the front and just see if we missed anything. Engineer. Hi. Is this Miss Gerard? Uh, yeah, this is Lori. Nice try. Okay. We got the steam thing. We got this square in the duck, which we know from the photo. What have you got? See you later. You better. Alright, we got the trunk. We got the shoes we are we already know about, right? Sadie Crawford. Nothing we can do with them. An eagle. Where else have I seen an eagle? We need to figure out how to get that off the wall. Salmon thing. Anything else in here? Oh, okay. Not gonna pull the brake. That would stop the train. I don't think good things would come of that. Uh, we need numbers. Does that have anything to do with the photo? Let's see. Don't believe so. Because uh, we did the four corners, it'd be three, sixteen, eighteen, and six. I'll we'll come back to that. He's still here. Down here. The little book of samplers. Band spot. One class is the long and narrow band sampler, which bands of fire as well as another class is the spot sampler.
Most moves are natural. Here's a list of common motifs and their meanings. America. Alright, let me take a photo of this. Sorry, there's that interim of text there. Alright, so we got that. What's this? Seven. Three, seven. I wonder if I can use that seven on the thing back there in the back. What's up? I'll let you get back to work. Goodbye. Teddy Eberhardt. Rollmeister. Even the doll we call Teddy Eberhardt a home. Rollmeister doll works. Do I get the doll or no? Okay. That's the thing I need the tool for. Sandberger. See the Jay Curly for the price of three dollars and seventy-three cents. One Christ Muscle Doll with decorative red ribbon at the sixteenth day of June, eight hundred and eighty. the pipe thing, which we had figured out, but it didn't seem to do anything. We get this tiger eye thing down here. Which we can't grab them. This is the book. That tiger's eye. That's the ones that are on the thing. Oh, so now we have a seven on there. Wait, what were the... The owl was what?
Right. Cherries are ten, and the owl is seven. If I do the three, two. Oops. That square and that duck look very familiar. Right, the square and the duck, that unlocked the door. The square is four. So I need a one and a three, it looks like. A duck is a one, so I need the one. Go through this door. Oh crap. Um, Alright, let's start from the left. Those look like steam pipes. Should have saved my game. All right, something goes in there. Wonder what's supposed to go here. Looks like I need to enter eight letters into this thing. The question is, which eight letters? Hmm. one to find me no offense uh, Nadine Nancy Nancy drew well as you can see I wasn't really spirited away by ghosts or anything that bookshelf in the dining car you step on this thing in the floor in there and it slides open I practiced disappearing for weeks so it was just all for show well not entirely See, here's the deal. My dad wound up with this train when he bought out Noram shipping. They'd been storing it in this old warehouse outside St. Louis for so long that everybody had just forgotten about it. Anyway, after like mass begging on my part, dad had the train restored to working condition and got me an engineer and track permits and all that other stuff until finally, here we are, on our way to find out what happened to Jake Hurley. Uh, I think you were going to explain why you kidnapped yourself. Oh, right. Well, see, I was one of the first people in like a hundred years to set foot on this train, okay? Everything was just the way it was when Jake disappeared. Except, I also found this. 
It's a letter that Jake wrote in 1901 to his niece back east. He was real paranoid about claim jumpers, which is why he never told anyone where his mine was. But he was also afraid something would happen to him, and no one would ever know where it was. So he wrote this letter to his only living relative, Ruth Kensington. Here, take it. You want me to have it? Why? Because you found me. See, in that letter, Jake tells Ruth that everything she needs to figure out where his mine is, is on this train. He also warns her that his wife's spirit is on the train, too, which kind of creeps me out. But the thing is, to find Jake's lost mine, we need the train. How do you know this Ruth person didn't find the mine decades ago? Mostly because I found that letter in the wastebasket. It was like she'd gotten so ticked off trying to follow her nutty uncle's clues that she finally said to heck with the whole thing. So you want me to try to figure out where the mine is? Uh-huh. As for the other people on board, if you want to show them that letter, go ahead. It's totally up to you. We're going to Copper Gorge because that's where Jake buried Camille, so I figured his mine might be somewhere around there, too. But if you think we need to go somewhere else, you just let me know and I'll have the engineer take us there. How come you didn't try to find the mine yourself? Maybe I did. Or maybe I just thought letting other people try to find it would be a good excuse to throw a party. I like parties. How well do you know your guests? Well, I don't know you or those Harvey guys at all. Hardy. Frank and Joe Hardy. Whatever. I didn't know John Gray before this either, but I love his show. And I figured he'd jump at the chance to investigate an honest-to-goodness haunted train. And now that someone has finally found me, I can finally go meet him for real. What about Tino Balducci? I met Tino right after he got famous for solving those robberies. Inviting him here for this was a no-brainer. I mean, what an awesome detective. And those piercing eyes of his? You just know his mind's in there going 90 miles an hour. How well do you know Charlena Purcell? I just know her from her books, which are so good. In fact, I just started reading her latest one, The Moon Tells No Lies. See, what I'd really, really like to do is write romance novels. Everybody who knows me says I'd be really good at it. In fact, a while back, I sent Charlena some ideas, you know, just to see what she thought. And? She hated them. <laughs> I'll come back later. I'll be waiting. Uh, she have anything in here for us? Looks like a dance floor, maybe? We gotta figure out the dance. What the hell is this? Is it like a word search? I'm not seeing any words.
So you have to go either up or down, left or right. can use this to open that grate I saw in Camille's car. Thank you. Anything else in here? No? Okay. have to do with silver silver is orange blue green red purple yellow let's take a photo of it but it's not gonna keep it no. all right silver is orange blue green red purple yellow I'm going to need a spyglass, a pickaxe, and a lamp. Citrine, amethyst, zircon. Those are all gemstones, I think. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like that thing, the spinny thing. A photo of that. Let me put the map on the conveyor belt. This little spinny thing. Get to keep it? Oh, I did get to keep it. Pencil back, we don't need that. So now we got an eight, two. We needed what, a one? We gotta find the rest of this note. Right, we already did that one. Can we put this on here? I guess not yet. Right, let's click some stuff off. Find Lori, found her. Finish that. Still have to do that. Can't check that off yet. I'm done with that. Still have to do that. I haven't done that yet. Finish that. Still have to do that. Haven't done that yet. Still have to do that.
Can't check that off yet. Haven't done that yet. The 3rd of November, 1901, from somewhere in Colorado. Dear Ruth, I know that we've never met, but now that your father, my estranged brother, is gone, you are my only living relative. I am writing to you to tell you about my mind before I, too, depart this earth, and its location is lost forever. I cannot tell you outright where it is, lest this epistle fall into the wrong hands, but with the information which follows, and with my train, which shall be yours upon my death, I promise that you'll be able to find it. First, you will need a map. To obtain it, know that my travels have taken me all over this great country, to towns which can be difficult to find, to Calico, Silverado, and Central City, to Dodge City, Virginia City, and Tombstone. To locate the mine on the map, you'll need my projector. When it comes to placing the stones, you'll need to ask someone who holds a warm place in my heart. I have stored his name accordingly. But to retrieve his name, you'll have to give the dolls an order. <laughs> this will require looking inside Camille's dancing shoes for the name of their maker, and wearing the shoes as you perform her favorite step on the dance floor. As for my beloved Camille, she has four words for you. Words which, when translated into numbers and used in combination, will help power my projector. But alas, she's taken them with her to her grave. So go to Copper Gorge, Colorado and pay your respects and let some of her goodness rub off on you. I promised Camille that this train would always be her home. In return, she promised to never leave and indeed she never has. People say I'm crazy, but I've seen her and heard her and feel her presence on the train even today, 20 years after her untimely death. So above all else, my dear niece, let nothing happen to my train. It holds wonderful things. Kindest regards, Jake Hurley. Interesting. Check. All right, let's go talk to Frank and Joe. We also got to find more coins. Oh, All right, let's go back and open this crate right here since we're here. tool I saw in the caboose. I bet that's what you use to unscrew these bolts. Where's the other one out here? The next one? More pipes to connect.
There, all done. Okay. Check. Right, let's go back to the boys. Save it. Yes, I found Lori. She's in the caboose. You were right. She disappeared because she wanted to see which of us would find her first. And you won. Congratulations. Did you know that Lori wants to be a romance novelist? <sighs> doesn't everyone do you think she could do it no could we please talk about something a little more pleasant I should get going let me know if you run across anything juicy all right baby hands have a good one Nancy what's with the Cheshire cat grin you found Lori yep She's holed up in the caboose, and as a reward for finding her, she let me have this. It's a letter from Jake to his niece, in which he leaves clues telling her how to find his mind. Only the clues are extremely obtuse. You found Lori. You got the letter with all the clues. Guess you don't need us anymore. Oh, Joe, quit pouting. Want any help? Are you kidding? You bet I do. Now you're talking. It stands to reason that the only person other than Jake who had to have known the location of Jake's mine was the engineer on Jake's train. Very true. Not necessarily. Jake might not have told him the exact location. Maybe he just had him drop him off somewhere nearby. Well, still, we'd be way ahead of the game if we knew where that drop-off point was. engineer had any surviving relatives we may be in luck the guy died more than a hundred years ago how are we supposed to find out his name maybe Charlena what's her face could tell us how to go about it good idea Frank I'll ask her I found a diagram for some kind of contraption that Jake designed but to operate it you need his pickaxe and some kind of lamp or lantern which it looks like he gave to somebody named Buell Buell Joe show her show her what that old picture we found uh Okay. We found this on the bookshelf. See? Buell's supplies and pawn shop. That's got to be the same Buell Jake gave his axe and lantern to. Yeah, a hundred years ago. And the guy was a pawnbroker, Frank. The stuff's probably long gone. Or maybe it's still somewhere in Copper Gorge. Well, that's where we're headed. So let's just hope for the best. Right. See you soon. You better. All right, should we call the engineer real quick? Engineer? This better be Miss Gerard. Well, actually... Forget it. <laughs> Alright, guess not. Let's go talk to Charlene. More questions? How would I go about finding out the name of Jake's train engineer? If you're smart, you'd ask me. And because my work is going surprisingly well, during my next break, I'll log on to my archives at home and see what I can turn up. That'd be great, thank you. Whoever invented the cellular modem, that's whom you should thank, dear. I'll touch bases with you later. That would be nice. All right, let's call Bess. See what they're all up to. Hello? Hi, Bess. Lori gave me a letter that Jake Hurley wrote to his niece, telling her how to find his gold mine. If Lori knows 
knows where the mine is, why doesn't she just make a beeline for it? Because apparently Jake was too paranoid to tell his niece outright where it was. So he filled the letter with all these weird, obscure clues. I don't think Lori could make heads or tails of them. I know I barely can. Sounds like when he lost his wife, Jake may have lost a few marbles as well. I get the definite feeling Lori Gerard has a thing for Tino Balducci. I saw him on TV once. He is very cute. Lori thinks he's the world's greatest detective. And you don't? I think he thinks he is. I think the only reason he's famous is because he looks good on camera. Well, I think you two are being way too hard on him. Just because he's good looking doesn't mean he can't also be smart. In fact, maybe Balducci tries to look incompetent on purpose. You know, to give the bad guys a false sense of security so it's easier to catch them. Ever think of that? No, Bess, I never did. Well, there you go. How about a hint? You bet. What's the deal with a grid with all the letters that's in the caboose? The idea is to form names out of adjacent letters. Just push on a letter, then push on a letter that's next to it. Keep doing that until you've spelled out a name. When that name drops out, try spelling another one. As for what names to spell, take a good look at the letter Jake sent to Ruth. As for what to do with the letters you end up with, I'd like to draw you a map, but I can't. Excellent. You guys are great. We know. See ya. All right, so it looks like when we come back in the next episode, that's what we're going to do. We'll head back and do all that good stuff. So appreciate you guys stopping by. Let's save this up right here. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys real soon. Have a good one.